I do a lot of surveys on my website and I get a lot of feedback from people when I do Facebook Lives and so on, which is how I know that many of you dream of opening up your own healing center one day and it can be done. Living proof of this is this week's Mainly Moonology podcast guest, a wonderful woman I met in Sedona called Catherine Lash. In this latest installment of our Voices of Sedona podcast series, I'm talking to Catherine about how she went from being a regular school teacher with absolutely no business experience whatsoever to running one of the most successful retreat centres in Sedona, the Spirit Quest Sedona Retreats. She breaks it down for us and shows us that anything is possible if you set your mind to it. Welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast. I'm your host, Yasmin Boland, an award-winning astrologer and the Sunday Times best-selling author of books including Moonology and creator of the Moonology Oracle Cards. My intention for this podcast is to help you understand how you can create your dream life using Mainly Moonology, the moon, as your guide. Okay, so talking about service, which really changed everything for my business it's about focusing on helping people which you've spoken about a lot uh, rather than focusing on the money so do what you love and the money will follow help other people and the money will follow is that something that you work with that that concept absolutely that's how the whole time for my business um even for teaching that's the driving force Mm. It never was about the money. Obviously, being a teacher is not, <laughs> not about the money. But um, And I have found that I've always been abundant and had more than enough when I focus on not only being of service to others, but to look at my deepest talents and know myself. Um, other people might know themselves as connected to animals or loving plants and aromatherapy or it's like a a self-inquiry about what drives me what excites me what's my passion yeah yeah so and having worked with lots of other healers that you bring into your center what advice do you have for people who are maybe they love doing reiki or they love getting massages or they love doing hypnotherapy but they haven't quite got their head around charging for their services because that's a big problem for a lot of people they just don't want to charge they think oh i'm not good enough or i don't have the qualifications or this is soul work i should do it for free what advice do you have for people like that yeah so when we talk about abundance a lot of people think of it in terms of money but abundance is fullness in your life fullness in all areas and health in all areas so when we come from that space of giving from a full cup rather than giving from an empty cup so that's what the retreat does too is it really helps people learn to nurture themselves and to be um to be healthy in all aspects of being. Um, I kind of trailed off, but what was the question? Again? So the people who um, don't feel comfortable charging, oh, charging. so many people okay. will find themselves giving away their services yes. for free. So the abundance thing, yeah, coming back to that, is that, uh, again, it's, it's an exchange. Everything's an exchange in life. And... If we have for activating our gifts and we have looked at who we are at our deepest core and we want, we said, oh, one of my soul's journey is to be of service, is to help people. Um, When we're activating our gifts, then there needs to be a fair exchange. And to be honest, in my own experience, when I've given things away, it has not been good. And I, in the beginning, I used to do that. I definitely do not do that anymore mm-hmm. because people, the people who give an exchange for the time and energy of someone else, they're more committed to it and they're invested in it. If it's just given to them, they just don't have that same degree of yeah. investment. And I'm just going to share a story, uh, which I haven't shared before. It was the last time I was in the States. And I did two workshops. Actually, I did three, but I'm just going to focus on two right now. One was in Los Angeles at a bookshop. 
uh, where I had space for up to 40 people in a courtyard. And I decided to do that one for free because the, with my visa, I can only um, charge if it's a nonprofit organization. So I did it for free. And I did the other one at a nonprofit up in Seattle. So at the one in Seattle, I had space for, I think, 150 people. And we had, I think, 150 people. People flew in from all over the country. It was amazing. We had a great time. And, uh, and they all paid, I don't know, 50, 80, 100 dollars, something like that. And it was great. The one in LA, I charged nothing. And basically, hardly anyone turned up. There you go. And it was really <laughs> annoying because I only had 40 seats. So I had 40 free tickets on Eventbrite. And then once they're gone, so I had to, I kept writing to people who were saying, oh, I missed out. Can I get a ticket? I'm like, I'm really sorry. They're all gone. Literally, I think eight people or maybe 12 people from the 40 turned up. And it was such a good lesson. <laughs> you don't give it away because people don't value it. I just went to a, a conference where uh, someone was talking about doing sort of a discovery call with a new client. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you make, you, you're you looking into something, it might be, you know, I want to find out about your retreat or whatever. And they charge $50 for the discovery call, which is 100% refundable once the call has been done. Because they found if you say to people, okay, we can speak uh, about, you know, you coming and using my business, coming to my retreat or whatever, um, on Thursday at 4 p.m. And then people just don't turn up. But you charge someone $50, you say it's a $50 refundable fee. And if you turn up, you get your money back. If you don't, I keep your 50. And it like increased their attendance rates by, you know, a hundredfold. Yes. So I guess that's maybe a lesson for people is that people value what they pay for. Absolutely. And they are, they, they want that exchange. It's like, no, I gave you my $50. So now I want my workshop. But if it's like, Oh, you know, it's a free workshop. I'm sure this is what happened in LA. It was a sunny day, mm -hmm. like a Saturday. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll go to the beach, actually. Yeah, you know, right. never mind. And it's free. Maybe I won't. Really good lesson for people. It's free. Maybe I won't get much out of it since exactly. it's free. You know, so, but I think there's a deeper issue. That's very important what we're talking yeah. about. But if we back up, yeah. it goes back to that self worth. I mean, if yeah. you really are have something you're you're giving and you're presenting then you need to value yourself and value um what you're doing now i i do believe that in the beginning and i do coach women i do co coach people with for their businesses um sometimes you do with practice with your your friends and your family and, and you yeah. do give it away and that's a great thing to do especially to, while you're getting confident to get confident and to really understand what you're doing mm -hmm. and how you're doing it but once you reach that point where you want to serve the public and you want to put it out there in a bigger way then you have to hold on to that confidence within yourself and believe in yourself step yeah. one <laughs> okay so just to finish off you've just mentioned about coaching women in business so that's a big thing for anybody who's watching uh, if you need coaching with women in business i can tell you this one has a great vibe i would definitely give her a run on that um, could you, I know I'm putting you completely on the spot here, but I'm going to ask you maybe your three top tips for women who want to do what you did and make a transition from one job to another. It happens to a lot of women, middle age, want to do something different. What would be your three top tips for starting your own spiritual business? Yes. Yeah, so you did say spiritual business. Spiritual. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I think that's mainly what I get is people who want to use their talents with for Reiki or they want to use their talents. They want to be a masseuse or they want to, you know, run a healing center. What are the top tips from the, someone who's actually done it successfully? Yes. Um, I would say number one is to get clear about your vision and your purpose and your passion. To what extent? To literally writing it all down? Yes, I would do a vision board. Mm -hmm. I did. I cut and paste. I did a vision board. Amazing. Um, just do that conscious check-in where you're really, you could write in a journal, but just get clear with yourself about what it is you love. And I meet people, though, that sometimes are not even clear there. That's... The, they have to even determine that 
Yeah. They have to ask that question. At this point in my life, what do I love? Where am I going? And they, they may not know. So again, back to that patience, have patience. And if you can't fully answer that question, just start exploring things. Go out and take different courses. Yeah. You'll meet people. You'll have conversations. But number one is to get clear about okay. what you want to do, where you're headed, and what your um, deepest passions are. Okay. Number two Beautiful. is the patience to just be in that space of allowing it not to congeal immediately, but <laughs> allow that openness um, and just trust that it will eventually evolve into what you need. But at what pa- point does patience become putting it off forever? Disillusion. <laughs> is that number three? <laughs> Do you take the leap eventually? Yeah, it's it's kind of that thing about, you know, manifesting your life and what degree do you just write it down and then boom, it, it, it shows up. The universe doesn't always deliver it that way. Sometimes it does, like the love of your life just shows up or the perfect opportun- business opportunity shows up. Sometimes the universe does does activate it that way, but a great deal of the time, it is more of a journey of growing the self and self-inquiry and awareness and baby steps and patience and uh, making the connections, getting out there, not just sitting in your house and expecting it all to come to you. So, um, So number three? Number three is to... um, the logistics of running a business are a little more black and white and they're um, so if you can't do it and you don't have that skill set, you don't have a business degree. I mean, I learned it along the way, but um, reach out to someone who can help you structure your business and know what accounts payable are <laughs> is what accounts receivable how to set up your books, how to, there's that whole other, how to advertise, how to market. There's, all that part of running a business. Your face and making don't like that part. <laughs> well, that's what it requires to yeah, run yeah. a bit, truly run a business. Yes. Or all the logistics that's sustainable elements. that will actually pay your bills. Exactly. Mm. And you have to have, you can't bypass and just sit and have this wonderful idea, mm. which is great. And then hope they come yeah <laughs> yeah of course oh, you have to market you have yeah. to we have a great internet presence we have a website we have a, a, a you know i have two incredible beautiful daughters one is my manager and the other one does all the web work amazing for me and they promote the business and so it's kind of a we have a social media manager who's right behind the camera yeah, Hi, Jessica. And, and, thank you yes and uh so they support me so part of it's delegating and knowing when to delegate and when to grow your business mm. and that's a huge piece we haven't even talked about like mm. growing your business too fast or mm. growing it too slow and there's a there's a nice balance between that and you can completely burn it down if you grow too fast yeah and vice versa so it's a lot of its timing so there are business coaches out there yeah if if people need it, yeah, to support them that way, yeah, and I would recommend it if they, yeah. if they need it, but yeah, I will just call you and talk to you about <laughs> it. You, you actually count, you teach women about this sort of thing. Yes, you? it's it's. I'm really quite still engaged in my business, and I'm quite busy, and I do sessions as well. Um, but it's just been more kind of people in my life that I chose to to help so right okay yeah it's more like that well if you if you want to ask you can always <laughs> ask you never know if you can send in a question they can yeah um we even have what we call a lifeline zoom coaching sessions where any, any of my staff will throw you a lifeline excellent and we can right. do it via the phone yeah. or zoom yeah which is great especially for anyone because i do have a lot of people in england and australia who might have questions as well obviously we'd love you to end up here <laughs> but you know it may that could actually be quite a, a wonderful service to offer and maybe quite lucrative is helping women all these women who want to do what you've done because you know you've done it yeah and it's not easy and you've done it so right know. so Catherine, let's finish by letting people know where they can find you on the internet yes so our business name is spirit quest sedona retreats and you can go to retreats in sedona.com or just google spirit quest sedona retreats it'll take you there and facebook and, and yes. instagram we have a social media presence okay. so you can find us there. And we have okay. a Facebook group called Awaken Aware. 
Amazing. Okay. It's a private group, but you can ask to join and okay. we can let you in. All right. Well, we'll put all the links in the description <laughs> so people come and find you. Awesome. And maybe next time I come, I'll come and do a, a one-on-one retreat Absolutely. so we can find out about that. But I really did want to sit down and talk to you about being a woman in a spiritual business because I just know it's going to be so valuable to so many women who want to get out of what they're doing and do something that's more heart aligned and fulfilling but who just aren't really sure where where to start so I think you've got a whole business niche there (laughs) frankly if you're interested thank you so much Catherine and thank you Jessica for being behind the camera for the last 45 minutes (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Mainly Moonology podcast. If you'd like to stay updated with the moon and moonology and astrology and all the other things we cover, be sure to subscribe to the podcast via Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You'll be notified whenever a new episode is up. Also, it would mean a lot to me and my team if you could leave us a glowing five-star review on your podcast platform of choice please. That actually helps more people find us too, which spreads the love and surely also brings you amazing karma for taking a moment to help us out and to help other people find the podcast. Have a great week and I hope to speak to you next week. Lots of love.